Space-time is a sightless pit, Earth a dim moat spinning deliciously downward into implacable depths. What we call life is a vibration through haphazard materia whose outlying waves overlap and intersect, obscuring their origins before folding back into nothing. We've felt the vibrations. Aliens exist and they are coming to Earth and doing fun little holes in the ground and designs and shit like that. But one such UFO encounter was more terrifying and more irrefutable than the Roswell incident of Area 51, even more twisted and haunting than Tim Burton's Mars attacks. A visitation that left vibrations still echoing around the pit, far beyond the depth of our fears and the peaks of our knowledge, spilling out into another pit larger still, and another pit larger still. A cosmic sheep steps over the pits and goes, bah. Zero 148, we're hearing very strange sounds out of the farmers, burning our animals. It's very, very active, making an awful lot of noise. Hi, ladies and gents, call me Pilot Bell, looking like a smooth one in the hell today, but do expect to glance out the window and notice a vaguely human silhouette perched on the wing from time to time. <laughs> Thanks for flying Delta Scare Lines, and we'll see you on the ground. Our destination, the Rendlesham Forest of Suffolk, England. It was in these quaint coastal woods that on the early morning of December 27, 1980, a security patrol near the Royal Air Force Woodbridge base reported seeing unusual lights descend into the surrounding forest. The patrolman registered the object as a downed or crashed aircraft and requested permission from the on-duty CO to investigate. The investigation, led by Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt, was detailed in an unclassified memo titled Unexplained Lights. As part of common procedure, Halt also recorded what he then thought would just be another routine investigation. Years later, in 1984, the same high-ranking respected officer released the recording to the public, and a cursory listen makes it plainly obvious why he did. When Halt and company wandered out into the dark of the Rendlesham Forest that night, they were completely unprepared for what came next. Hey, this is Erie. This is strange. Halt and Co. first stumbled upon what they describe as a landing site. Each one of these trees that face into the blacks, what we assume is a landing site, all out of the bridge and facing in the same direction. The trio then noticed strange shapes made in the ground below a fresh opening in the canopy. The spots, or holes, too perfectly spaced and freshly made to explain away and they were radiating energy. When the lights are turned off, once we are focused in, it allows time for the eyes to adjust. We are getting an indication of a heat source coming out of that center spot, as, uh, which will show up on the Heat is some form of energy. It's hardly heat at this stage of the game. And it is looking directly overhead where you can see an opening in the trees, plus some freshly uh, broken pine branches on the ground underneath. Looks like someone came off about 15 to 20 feet up. Some small branches about an inch or less in diameter. Suddenly, noise in the darkness. Zero 148, we're hearing very strange sounds out of the farmers burning our animals. It's very, very active, making an awful lot of noise. Holt didn't know that there were no animals on the nearby farm, but that the local muntjac deer were making a ruckus, maybe due to the presence of three men with tiny flashlights, or maybe, just maybe, something bigger and far more sinister. Either way, that's when the light appeared. Straight ahead, in between the tree, there it is again. 
Watch. Straight ahead off my flash right there. Yeah, so watch. There it is. Hey, I see it too. Yeah, it's a strange, small red light. You'll see on uh, maybe a quarter to a half mile, maybe further out. I'm going to switch off. We have smoke the first night, but we've seen we're about 150 or 200 yards from the site. Everything else is just deathly calm. There is no doubt about it. There's some type of strange flashing red light ahead. There's yellow. I saw a yellow tinge in it, too. Weird. It, it, it appears to be maybe moving a little bit this way. Yes, it's brighter than it has been. Yellow. It's coming this way. Awesome. It is definitely coming this way. Pieces of it are shooting off. There is no doubt about it. This is weird. Another word that might describe the scene that night in the Rendlesham Forest. Strange. Oh, we're right on the left. Let's approach to the edge of the woods up there. Can you want to do without lights? Let's do it carefully. Come on. Okay, we're looking at the thing. We're probably about two to three hundred yards away. It looks like an eye winking at you. It's still moving from side to side. And when you put the star scope on it, it, it sort of has a hollow center, a dark center. It's, it's you know, like the pupil of an eye looking at you and winking. And the flash is so bright to the star scope that uh, it almost burns your eye. A light pinned into the sky by an inky pupil penetrating the night. The soft glint of the cosmic sheep observing the pits, the nesting dolls extending inward to the furthest reaches of man's ignorance. Yeah, we're both heading north. Okay, here, here he comes from the south. He's coming toward us now. Come on, we're observing what appears to be a beam coming down of the ground. Two UFOs remained visible in the sky for over one hour. A leisurely walk around the airbase turned into a night to remember. Holes in the ground pulsing with energy, impossible lights in absolute darkness, forest animals acting like huge fucking babies. The Rendlesham Forest incident is not so readily waved off as mere coincidence or swept under the mouse pad by the powers that be. This was a stark, shivering, nude, extraterrestrial event, and one with its secret bits casually splayed out in public. Colonel Holt saw something that night, but because we need to feel safe and in control, he saw a lighthouse through the trees. Deer are always spooked and generally pissed. Some rabbits dug the holes, and the lights, who can trust their own eyes, let alone three pairs? Why do we latch on to illogical explanations so readily? Are we tacitly lying in wait to answer some long-awaited cosmic call, an awakening from hyperreality to the cold, colorless terrain of our true, fragile human perception? What lies beyond this knowing, this step beyond our ornately framed modern contexts? What happens when we press Alt and F4 in fluid, practiced combination and wake up? What background will we find on our mind's desktop? A custom rain meter arrangement circa 2011, or a default Windows XP era landscape, itself a window into another unreality, pointing infinitely inward and inward until our eyes are desktops themselves, framed instances of green hillsides, live readouts of CPU temperature pointing forever at green hillsides and CPU temperature, hummocks and heat, hummocks and heat, hummocks and heat, and... Oh, what's up? How's it going? <clears throat> One sec. <clears throat> what happens when we fail to look away from the LCD, the CRT, the hot 144 hertz illuminating reality? What happens when powering down a gaming PC puts more than windows to sleep? No, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait.